Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. And today I have a very special guest, Rosenbell. <laughs> hey Karen. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Um, it'll be great to share my <laughs> story, learnings, experiences and looking yeah. forward to it. And Rosenbell has a very amazing story. So really excited to dig into it. But yeah, first give a quick one minute introduction. What do you do? Uh, so I'm a pro- so Roswell Diaz, uh, project manager at BDO in Australia, um, based in Hobart. Don't really ask me how that happened, <laughs> but uh, that's a whole different story. Um, yeah, and I I pretty much love the place I work at. I love the people I work with, um, and I'm just grateful and thankful for everything I have. So. Yeah. That's amazing, and what an excellent attitude to have towards life. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and so we're going to start at the beginning. So, Rosenbell, what kind of child were you like growing up? Um, I don't know. I, I've surely changed, but... Ooh, uh, this is exciting. But when... So, as, as a kid, I was quite a stubborn and <laughs> adamant kid. So, if I wanted something means I want it. Um, I am a bit of the same right now as well. Um, if, but it's a little different this time. It's probably less materialistic mm-hmm. um, in comparison to when I was a kid. As a kid, if I wanted something, absolutely need it. Um, as a kid, I always, um, I wouldn't say an introvert, but I wasn't an extrovert either. Mm-hmm. Um, it would take me a while to get used to people. It would take me a while to start talking to people around. Uh, but then once, like I am now, once I start talking, I don't know when to stop. So yeah. <laughs> please keep a watch of the time uh, and tell me when I should will. keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's good. We, we welcome rambling and as many stories as possible. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me, do you have siblings and yeah, how many? Yes, so I um, have one sibling. Um, I have a younger sister, Karina, who's mm. based in in Hobart um, too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and then tell me more about like how you sort of fit in the school environment. So were you a kid that really loved school or were you the very sporty? Were you popular? You um, it's oh, another funny one, but I hated school <laughs> because firstly, um, I didn't mention this in my introduction, but I originally come from India, from Mumbai, um, and their schools start at seven in the morning with, uh, so seven to 7.30 you're doing something and then 7.30 to eight is kind of assembly and what have you. And then you would actually start with your first lecture for the day um, at um at eight o'clock um which would probably be one of the boring subjects but um (laughs) anyway to go to so to go to school keeping in mind the traffic in in mumbai being um india's financial capital at any point of the day or, or night there's traffic and so to get to school i would need to leave from home at 6 30 which meant i would have to get up at almost 5.45 to get ready and get to school on time Um, and I used to have a school bus. Anyway, coming back to your question, the reason, so what I was at school, I hated school. Um, I would just hate because I am not a morning person again, so I'm a night person. (laughs) Uh, So I hated school. I would hate to go to school. But one, it was funny, once I would get to school, I would kind of take a bit to kind of just get into it. But then I was one of those who always wanted to be, uh, which I am even now, where if I'd love, I'd love to get on stage, I love to do things, yeah. I love to kind of be out there, you know, public speaking, love stuff the like that. The extrovert coming out. Yeah, the <laughs> extrovert. All of a sudden I'd form a, a very introvert, quiet yeah. person in the morning to all of a sudden getting to school and loving to, to get involved get out there. I'd love getting involved. Um, yeah. Some of my friends would call me uh, a teacher's pet because yeah. <laughs> if the teacher wanted someone to go and do something, I'd put my hand up. If there was yeah. a concert or or like an annual day or a school festival, I wanted to be out there in the dance performances yeah, and skits and whatever. So I think it was a bit of a weird one. I hated studying. Um, 
for me studying was I, I didn't probably hate studying but for me the thing was if I've got to give a test it would always be that I would study the night before <gasps> one of those kids I can oh. never even now I can never do things in advance it's always last minute and oh, get on to bad it. habits don't die <laughs> <laughs> they stick for a long time and i think this one a few have stuck with me for life yeah that's so interesting sounds like you know in the morning you're not really quite awake because you're not exactly a morning person and then when once you warm up it's like performance mode exactly Hello. it's like i'm on stage and that's yeah. it yep uh, yeah. the floodlights are on and the spotlights are on it's me like and it's like this light switch and suddenly it's that's like it. lights camera action, action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's pretty funny so tell me did you like have any favorite subjects at school um drama no not no. really i to be honest um i'm just trying to think of my favorite subject i don't know Did you um, like studying clearly? I didn't like <laughs> studying so I didn't really enjoy any subject. Um yeah no I didn't really have a favorite yeah. subject. I do know the subjects I hated and one of them oh, was please. one of them was math or mathematics. Um yeah. absolutely hated it. <laughs> I suck at it uh and yeah. funny enough I'm in an accounting firm so uh, yeah but um, circle, man. yeah but um uh, the role over here is very different. I don't to accounting so yeah. it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um but no I don't really have a favorite subject. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. Maybe you loved all subjects equally or No, I don't. Hated, hated them it all. I think equally. the latter equally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. And then so when you were in high school and you were sort of thinking about the future, what was sort of running through your mind in terms of possible careers or what did your parents want you to do? Um I didn't know what I was going to do uh, no, looking at the way I was kind of being this very smart <laughs> top 3 ranking you know students while I was in primary and kind of you know I was always one of those ranking students wow, in so my you got younger yeah I got But really you hated good grades studying. I had and you cramped that, that it was that quite <laughs> quite surprising so from grade 1 to about grade 5 I did exceptionally well and stuff like that yeah. but then the moment i reached grade 6 7 8 9 and 10 was a disaster oh um yeah i reached a point where i didn't know what i wanted to do in life um i didn't even know what i wanted to do next um yeah. for me it was all about just getting done with school and that's about it and then what happens happens um i reached i became the kind of person by the time i was in grade 10 i was like oh you know wherever life takes me yeah give it um, the fire. i don't know i don't want to plan because i did plan a lot previously and it obviously didn't go as i expected so yeah. um good learnings but um so yeah when i was in school and when i was reaching you know my final years in school because in india school means up to grade 10 and then grade 11 and grade 12 is college Oh, yes okay. so f- when i talk school i'm talking from grade 1 to 10 yeah. uh, 11 12 is college and then then on its university oh, so so when i was getting out of grade 10 was basically me getting out of school yeah trying to pick a major now which would be That's grade so 11 hard. and 12 so at grade 10 when i was about 15 years old. I yeah. obviously didn't know what I wanted to do, but I just wanted to get done with school because that's how much I hated getting up in the morning. <laughs> um and then when I was in grades, so when I finished off school and you had to get into college, you had to pick a major and the majors you'd pick up would be um you pick up physics, chemistry, maths or um uh, biology which included botany and zoology so botany study of plants and zoology study of animals um and none of them really interested me as such um uh, but obviously the one thing i knew is i wanted to kind of get into it um mm. and not because everyone else was because all my friends no one did it all of them were doing okay. hotel management and what have you um and i wanted to do it just because i loved the whole concept of i just loved computers now keep in mind unlike kids in you know developed nations like australia and stuff mm. i had my first computer when i was in grade 9 yeah and again i'm not a young person i'm <laughs> i'm not old either but anyway yeah. <laughs> um 
when I, I got a computer when I was 14, 13, 14 yeah. years. So I was in grade 8, I guess. Yeah, around that time. Yeah. Okay. That's when I got a computer. And it just fascinated me because this was an old box computer with the massive yeah. heavy screens, which had a massive CPU, like a central processing unit, yeah. big, huge box the old fashioned keyboards, everything was wired. We had no concept of wireless or Bluetooth or whatever. Um, so that was the thing that fascinated me. So the one thing I did know was when I was in school was that I wanted to do something in computers, but to get into anything in computers back in India in those days, which is, you know, I'm talking 20, 10, 15, 20 years, if you wanted to do anything in IT, uh, you had to be great at physics, chemistry and maths oh. because you had to pick, you could pick either one major. So you could go either physics, chemistry, maths, or you had to go physics, chemistry and biology. By default, you had two languages, which was English and then you pick up French or Spanish or whatever, or yeah. Sanskrit or whatever. Um, and so for me to do engineering uh, or to do IT, I knew I had to go in for physics, chemistry and maths. And to get into physics, chemistry and maths, you had to do extremely well in grade 10 to get in a really good oh, college. Oops. <laughs> exactly. So all of that started coming to mind. But um, I somehow scraped through physics, chemistry, maths in my 11th and 12th. I still don't know how. Yeah. Um, and um, I got into engineering. So yeah. Uh, Cool. Yeah. And so was computer science, was it the dream? What was the expectation versus reality? Um, there was no, um, what do you say, there was no... Um, expectation gap? There was no real expectation. It, I was basically... Um, I was basically just said, oh, engineering. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, cool. You know what, let's yeah, do it. Um, and again, because coming from India, you would, I would easily get compared to uh, my, my classmates. Yeah. I would get compared to smarter kids in my family. Like my cousins were oh, all the 90s, 85, 90 high ranking, yeah. um, you know, students. Um, and I was there who was, by the time I was in grade 12, I was like this 40% scrape through past yeah. kind of yeah. a, uh, oh, yes. candidate passed. yeah just past <laughs> now it was it was I was on the moon um, yeah. <laughs> so I think there was also that expectation that I would do well and stuff so yeah. when I was when my dad said oh you know you should look into engineering I just said okay cool I'll, I'll look into engineering and it was computer so I was like oh cool maybe that's that's my calling yeah. um, and yeah I got into engineering uh, so I did um, I probably didn't get into one of those uh, Indian institutes of technology and stuff in India, which are those really well-known, yeah. famous universities in, in, in India. But um, I still did fairly well by getting into a U.S. college and doing my software engineering from a U.S. university. So um, yeah, it was not awesome. Bad. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Took me a while, but got there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of, uh, if if I had to go back to my dad now, I hope he'd say, you lived up to my expectation, but I don't oh, know if he sweet. would. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, parents' expectations, they can be quite a burden. Quite unrealistic life. sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah, especially Asian parents. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, don't get started about that. Uh, yeah. And then so when you so you were studying software engineering, not computer science, is that correct? That's right, and it's it's very similar. Yeah, you kind of do stuff. similar stuff. Um, it's just the level of detail you'd go into certain topics rather. Um, but in software engineering, I think the the other part is also where you do your course from. So for example, I did my software engineering from a US university, which was uh, Champlain which is based in Vermont in Burlington. Um, and so because it's the US curriculum and US way of, you know, education, yeah. um, it's very different. Um, I did, I studied topics like philosophy, 
Oh, which I love. Awesome. By the way, if you ask me a subject now, which I love, by the time I got into engineering, I loved phys- philosophy one. Um, I studied Plato and uh, the one thing that stuck with me and still is something I keep at the back of my head when I look at people, um, everything is a copy of the original. I hope oh. I've got that right. Um, so everything is pretty much plagiarized. <laughs> yeah, everything is a copy. Yep. So yeah, I may There's be no getting this wrong, but the cop, the, the 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 gist of the whole thing of Plato was everything is a copy. I hope yeah. I've got that. I really yeah. hope I've got that don't right. Worry, but anyway, don't worry. but there were two. So I love philosophy, yeah. which was something I studied in engineering and sociology, all about Ooh. society, and that was again a very eye opening. Was a very refreshing, I would say studying subjects like this i studied modern history oh, i studied art history that's awesome um and i was doing software engineering so yeah. we had um because i was doing this distance education course um and this is back in 2009 right so it's yeah. 10 12 years back um i was doing software engineering three semesters a week we could pick a maximum of five subjects um and yeah, so I would pick up business analysis and you know a whole range of software topics yeah. or IT topics, but then you would get to throw in these few other miscellaneous kind of subjects. Yeah. So I did I did macroeconomics as well, oh, that's um, awesome. just because it made I could you very, choose. Like, world round. Yeah, so it gave me while it gave me the core skills I need in the software tech space, it also opened up. Yeah, myself to a whole lot of other things but what it did was a lot of people back then and my parents as well they're like oh what the hell is this yeah. it's not software like yeah why are you studying history yeah. and why are you studying american history but i think now when i look back at it it gave me a completely different perspective one it kind of gave me the technical skills and knowledge i need to do my job but it also gave me the other skills i need to i think grow and get be more aware of um, and that's why i really love philosophy for example because you could have healthy debates um and it just gave you a completely coming from india at least because it's not so common in india like over oh, here okay fine everyone's a philosopher yeah. and, you know you walk down king george square and everyone's a philosopher over there but um coming from a place like mumbai from india you know, back in the early 2000s or late 2000s, whatever, it was, it, it was completely different, very refreshing, yeah. uh, something that you didn't expect. So I went in with, you know, the, ex- I, the expectation I set was, oh, it's going to be very math and yeah. trigonometry and, you know, it's engineering, so Which it's going to be all, <laughs> yeah, it's all the stuff I hate, but I was yeah. just doing it because my parents wanted me to do engineering yeah. or become a doctor, which I obviously would suck at. <laughs> Um, but I think all these other topics gave me this completely different perspective yeah. to all of a sudden from someone who hated you, who hated school yeah. to all of a sudden I started enjoying university and it just helped me look at things very differently. And I, back then, my focus was never, oh, you know, going and studying or anything but i think i started enjoying it because it started becoming more practical yeah. to me in day-to-day life um i mean we'd go out you know we'd sit late night with friends whatever all of a sudden you're discussing you just throw in this one line of what you've learned in philosophy oh. and then you would just start this completely random conversation yeah. at night when everyone's probably a few drinks down and now you're yeah. all discussing a topic which i would probably never ever do but all of a sudden, back then, I was doing it, and it just showed the level of influence it had on me as well um, in my just my day-to-day life. So that's amazing. It really kind of opened your mind. It absolutely did. It absolutely yeah. did. And I think, uh, yeah, I think university was completely different. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I may have diverted way off that question. No, 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 no. I don't even remember the question, but I find that's quite interesting. A lot of people like university is just a continuation of school but for you university was like a complete the, yeah, opposite yeah, of it school what yeah, school was it, it and i think i think the difference was um i think you asked me about engineering and it and stuff and yeah. computer science and i think if i just going back to you know 
studying in a U.S. university yeah. versus if I studied in an Indian university, yeah, I think that... You would have uh, hated it. <laughs> I would have probably still hated it and probably been one of those who never knew what I was wanting to do again. Yeah. But I think in an Indian university, I would never study history. Obviously, I hated history, but yeah. you know, I would never get that. I'd never get philosophy and all these other other topics that kind of open you up, open up your world to a whole yeah. raft of it other things. Teaches you how to think, essentially. Exactly, it basically gets you to think. It basically gets you to um, realize what you have, what you don't. like. It just it just yeah. was a whole Mind different blowing. experience. It was just um, wow moment in my life where I was like, oh wow, okay, fine, I am good at something, uh, yeah. if nothing. And I think also. I was fortunate to kind of have, I think, friends who shared the similar, they thought at the same level. So if we all thought shit, we all thought shit. Yeah. Right. It was not just me. So what that never made me feel like, oh, You're weird my mates weird. are doing really great and I'm the weird one yeah. or stuff like that. It just, I never felt like, oh, I'm in a an like yeah I don't fit in I never had that I think it's just the friends and it's not like I went around selecting friends because I've I've always been bad at selecting my mates but fortunately unfortunately Shout my mates to Rosenville's <laughs> <card> friends. <laughs> but, but I think all my friends are like I've been lucky to have great friends and I think yeah. it just made university so much more complete fun. it made it a lot lot fun and the funny part was none of my friends in university were from engineering. <laughs> so the university I studied in, we had engineering, which was software engineering specifically. And then we had business administration and hotel management. Yeah. And a lot of my mates were from hotel management and oh, cool. business administration. Yeah. Um, I was the only one in software, or maybe few of us in software. Yeah. Yeah. And so at this point in time, when you were thinking about graduation, were you like, oh yeah, software engineering, let's go. Or were you like, ah, oh, this philosophy, you know, this looks interesting, everything but software engineering. Um, it's funny because when I completed my software engineering, my professor said one thing to me. Yeah. Um, and this is my professor from the US. I still remember this Gary Savard. <laughs> and his, so um, at the end of the course, so there's this American dude who walks up to me, um, probably hated my guts because I would walk in late into the lecture. I would walk in drunk on some days and I shouldn't be saying this, but I've said it. Um, and he, he one day just before, so he was, this was his last semester in the US, last course in the, you know, in India, sorry. Uh, and he was returning to the US after the semester. Um, and then we would have another American professor come. But there's one thing is like, um, can I give you one single advice? And it's the only advice I ask you to keep for the rest of your life. Never get into software coding because you will absolutely suck at it. And the company you work at will be at an absolute loss. And I looked at him and I was like, cool, <laughs> point noted. Um, and I soon realized that I'm not the kind of, I'm not the kind of person who can sit in one place and do things like right now after a few minutes I'll be all jittery because yeah. I can't sit in one place for too long um, so I kind of realized that soon that I'm not the types who likes to sit in one place I love meeting people I thrive on You're people too social. yeah like for me it's uh, like I keep saying this time I may have said this to you previously as well is you throw me onto Queen Street in Brisbane for those in Brisbane watching you probably know what I'm referring to but if you throw me onto Queen Street and um, you call me back in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you throw me there, you would have thrown just me. But I think when I come back in 15 minutes, I'll come back with another 100 people because all of a sudden I've come back <laughs> with amazing. mates. Um, yeah. I, and that's what I really love is I thrive on people. And that's why I love the project management side of yeah. things as well. Um, because you get to work with, yes, you've got your team of project managers in a business, but you get to work with different people at different phases of, the project, um, everyone bringing different expertise to the table, everyone bringing that variety um, every single day. So it's no single, no day is the, the same. same. There's no concept of monotonous work, I think, yeah. as well. Um, but going back to my university, I think the, the other bit that I loved about university was 
yes while i was trying to figure out what am i going to be doing in my you know as uh, in you know, as a career and stuff um it allowed me i think what i loved doing was even as when i was not a kid but when i was a little in my say my late teens i loved organizing parties i loved organizing mm. social gatherings like small family things yeah. but i loved so if we were doing a party i would make sure oh let's do this let's do yeah. that and and my parents would get really pissed off because they'd be like what the drama about this bloody party yeah. it's a party you know just keep it simple but i would like to make a big yeah, pomp big about deal. it a big deal about it yeah. um when i was doing my engineering i got into i met some of these friends and they were all into event management it was all about hosting the college yeah. festival um and back in 2006 7 8 9 10 and stuff the the big hit in in mumbai and in india for that matter was having these rock concerts oh. and so every college that had engineering would do some kind of a rock concert and call it something and so the college i so the us college i worked for which was uh, champlain mm. we did a concert known as chaos k a y o s but with the same meaning of chaos as in yeah. confusion and commotion cool. um and so i was doing that event management and i think that kind of while i was doing it because i enjoyed the whole thing of i met people yeah at the same time i kind of enjoyed putting things in a bit of a plan and kind of presenting it back to say yeah. where we are at i was invariably kind of doing the project management oh. aspects of it i didn't pick it up then but yeah. i have realized it off late because i still enjoy doing events yeah. and that's what i do as part of my role at pmi queensland while i work at bdo i volunteer at pmi queensland yeah. so i think it all kind of when you join the dots now it all kind of yeah. makes sense but back then it looked like a waste of time it was it was a waste of time to my parents <laughs> because i would go because of event management and just how the industry works keep in mind we were i was only about 19 20 when i was organizing these events yeah. in my university um and then leaving early mornings getting back late nights at like yeah. 1 2 in the morning oh, getting no. up but that's the whole event management industry where no matter what your age is if you're organizing an event it just goes on forever yeah. and so uh, to my parents it was like what a this is garbage and yeah. it's useless what are you doing um and my dad would throw a tantrum sometimes when i would yeah. get home at late at night and he'd be like oh why don't you just stay in a university why are you coming home yeah. this is not a hotel but um i think It's all said and done i enjoyed and it's the university that allowed me to get involved yeah. um and so i ended up organizing my graduation party as well because <laughs> in india fun. back then you would not have graduation ceremonies but because this was a us college in india yeah. our oh, that's so sick yeah our graduation ceremonies would happen in five star hotels in india in mumbai oh, so now cool. it's it's a graduation ceremony which yeah had a formal part to it but then it had a completely informal part to it where the bar would be declared open yeah. and a bit of dancing and stuff it was a bloody party um yeah. so i think all of that just ties back to exactly it just yeah, comes back do. to where i am right now what i'm doing right now what i'm doing rather but i think i got something to take away from each of it and every part of that kind of taught me something yeah. um yeah that's so awesome and then i remember previously you told me you had the best job ever so tell me what exactly does a project manager do and why is it the best job i think it's it's a tough one what does a project manager do it's it's a very tough one um but the one thing i will say and i actually got something i will read this or actually i've got a screenshot yeah is I that okay go for it i'll read this out because this is something that absolutely resonates with uh <laughs> okay this is this is literally it different um so two parts to it um one is if you ask me what project management is it's very hard for me to explain what it is i can explain what i do but what is project management it is an art and a science 
It allows your team um, to focus on the work that matters, free from the distractions caused by tasks going off track or budgets spinning out of control. Mm. Now, the piece to keep in mind is, and I'll read this following bit, is operations keeps the light on, yeah. strategy provides light at the end of the tunnel, but project management is the engine that moves the organization forward. And this is the piece that it, it just yeah. resonates really well with everything I do as well is yes, you can have these amazing strategies. You could have these amazing planning days and workshops and stuff. But at the end of it, when you've got to execute and get that all yeah, happening together. and you bring it all together, it's not operations that do it. It's not finance, it's not your HR, it's not your marketing teams, but it is your project management teams and your project managers that actually help you bring it together. And, and why I say it is an art and a science is, it is an art, it is a science of how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to, I think project management, yes, anyone and everyone can be a project manager, but in saying that not everyone is a project manager, manager yeah. you can have the official title versus actually if you're you need the role. exactly and you need to be the kind of person who thrives on people yeah. you enjoy sitting with people you enjoy having the conversations you know when to have a laugh you know when to kind of Take cut it short and kind of stick to stick to the scope uh, but it goes back to the fact that i love people and i thrive on people and i think that's all project management is all about people and that's why it's an art and a science right oh, uh, it's beautiful understanding how to manage people, understanding people. Um, it's not just understanding people, it's an also trying to take it a step forward to understand what are they going through on that particular day for you yeah. to be able to understand, okay, fine, how do I manage the team? And the best part is because I'm, I'm a people person, yeah. it makes it even more fun because I'm always, you're working with different teams on different projects. Yeah. You don't have the same team. You may have a few members who are consistent across your projects, but yeah different days, different teams, um, different set of people, different moods to deal with, different tantrums to take care yeah. of as well. Um, it's not all fun. It is um, yeah, it keeps you challenging. Hey, it, do, it does. It does keep me on my toes. It keeps me busy, keeps me out of mischief. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah no. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I say I love my job is because of the fact I get to meet all these interesting people. Uh, some of them are absolute characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of them are samples, I will say. Uh, some of them are <laughs> bloody jokers. Yeah. But it would not be fun if not for all these people. And it would not be yeah. as entertaining as it is <laughs> if not for all these people. And I think also through project management, I think I've built my connections yeah. and you work with so many people, you're working on one project and one project itself will keep you connected with so, 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 so many people. So yeah. it absolutely, um, it just seamlessly works out for me. So I'm very happy about it. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So we're nearly at the end of the podcast. Got to chuck you the deep question. Yeah. Rosenbell, what's the meaning of life to you? What's the meaning of life to me? I don't know what's the meaning of life, but I will say whatever you have, you've just got to be grateful and thankful because, um, yeah, you could be the best person in life, but if you, you just don't know what you have today, if it's going to be there tomorrow. So I think it's absolutely critical to be grateful and thankful. And I think... Uh, give the relationships the love that it deserves because um, you never know when it's gone and sometimes it's always too late when it's gone. So um, I don't know if that's life, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I always focus on in life is just being grateful and thankful um, for what you have because it's always too late when it's gone. Yeah, and it's all temporary. It's all that just there. So make the most while while it's in front of you because... There's no point crying about once it's gone. So, yeah. yeah, that's cool. And you have 30 seconds to answer the last question. So if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently about your life? Uh, if I won the lottery tomorrow, what would I do differently is um, 
probably the first thing is um, the very first thing I would do is probably go and bring my parents from India to Australia. I think that would be the number one thing I'd do. Yeah. I'd, whatever amount I get from the lottery is what I would invest first thing into their visa and bringing them across. Because I'd love to have them with me and not having them in India. Uh, and then what else would I do? I think I'd just go and invest that money into something. Um, I'm not going to do any charity work because I'm I'm not going to try and sound like Mother Teresa on yeah. this uh, podcast. <laughs> I'll be very honest. No, nah, yeah. no charity and I'm not donating the money to anyone. <laughs> I'm going to take the money, invest it and then um, I think you never know when I may need that money, right? You can't... Yeah, play it conservative. Every day, is, every day is not a lottery day. So I think the yeah. one day you win it, you might as well take good control of it uh, and invest it. So, yeah. yeah. Good, good awesome. answer. So we're pretty much at the end of the podcast. Awesome. Want to say bye? Thank you. See you guys. Bye.